It is right now turning 10 minutes past the hour Moscow time. NATO has begun deploying surface-to-air missiles and troops on Turkey's border with Syria. The alliance approved the reinforcements last month after Ankara requested support. Uh, NATO claims the move is to help defend its member from the conflict in Syria. Well, let's uh, delve a bit deeper into this now with Jeremy Salt, a Middle Eastern history and politics professor at uh, Bill Kent University in Ankara. Uh, good to see you today, sir. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday with NATO officials saying the deployment of Patriot missiles in Turkey is for defensive purposes only. Uh, how likely is it, do you think, these weapons might actually be used? I don't think they're going to be used at all. I think the situation has changed very much on the ground in Syria. It strikes me that the armed gangs are very much on the back foot now. I don't see any enthusiasm for a military attack on the part of the United States. Saudi Arabia might be keen, Qatar might be keen, but they are simply the financiers and armorers of these groups. Um, and there's no possibility at all, no likelihood that Syria will attack Turkey. The only circumstances in which those missiles would be used was, would be if there were a NATO attack initiated from Turkey into Syria, and then, of course, Syria would strike back. Uh, but, but I think the atmosphere has changed dramatically. I don't think the Americans in particular like what they're seeing in Syria. They, are, they have uh, Afghanistan very much in mind when they supported um, the Mohajirin to fight the Soviet Union, and then when that was over, al-Qaeda, as the Mohajirin had, had turned into al-Qaeda, turned against them. And I think they're frightful of the same thing happening in Syria. Well, so, certainly NATO has been saying that these, uh, these missile batteries will not be used, the troops will not be used, as you said. But I must say it's quite refreshing to actually have a, have a sense of optimism in what you're saying here. Moscow has said the deployment of missiles will only build tension in the region with, with Syria, possibly seeing this as a provocation. How do you see it? I think, well, as I said before, I think the, the situation has changed. I mean, it's quite clear that from the beginning of this crisis that this anti-Syrian coalition did want to attack Syria with the objective of destroying the government in Damascus. But I think that the fact that this government has stayed in place for the last two years, despite everything being thrown at it, the fact that the Syrian army has not disintegrated, the fact that we've seen virtually every single day news of the most terrible atrocities being carried out by these armed groups, the fact that these armed groups have rejected the authority of the council formed in Doha, the fact that Doha Council has no support inside Syria, all adds up to a kind of very clear message for the Americans in particular that they have to kind of change the course in Syria and come up with something different. Well, I think, I think that's yeah, I mean, now it, it, in the process. It, it, well, you say it might maybe now in the process of, of the West changing its stance on Syria. Certainly, we've been having Christmas lately in the, in the holiday time, and there seems to be a, a, bit of a, a bit of a slowing down of the story, certainly over the past month or so. But it's intriguing that you say, perhaps, that certain Western powers are now perhaps realizing that the rebels, the, these, these fractured rebel groups they've been supporting, perhaps are the wrong groups to be supporting in the first place. Well, they've used them as a bludgeon. They use them as a bludgeon against um, the government in Damascus. I and mean, the fact is that they now have to contemplate the possibility, which I think is a very remote one, that they'll actually take power. And if they, have, if they did that, we know that their agenda is not the same as the agenda of the United States, that they are fundamentally anti-democratic, um, anti-Western, anti and they could then become a threat to Western interests across the region. And, of course, there'd be a risk of blowback inside Turkey and other neighbouring countries. Do you, think, do you think there are any echoes here, echo, echoes of Libya, echoes of Afghanistan, even echoes of Iraq that might, that might make certain Western powers, or i.e. NATO, are reluctant to really get involved? Certainly NATO, as you're suggesting here, is almost on the back foot and backpedalling, although it is offering uh, troops and military support along the Turkey-Syria uh, border. I, th I think that Libya in particular had a very, very uh, significant effect on American thinking because uh, the Americans backed these groups in Libya only for one of them to apparently kill their ambassador. And this caused great shock in Washington. Uh, and uh, so when the Americans look at this situation and uh, we know that there are voices inside NATO that are keen for action with the NATO Secretary General, Anders Fogh Rasmussen is one of them. We know that Britain and France, uh, you know, talk in a fairly belligerent fashion. But the key to the situation is in Washington. And I don't think the Americans uh, have any interest in taking this any further because they know perfectly well, apart from everything I've said already, that to actually intervene in Syria would trigger off a, a major regional crisis much, much bigger than we're already seeing. All right. Uh, and, and just uh, my final question here. I'm running a bit low on time. I do answer for, you, for your patience here, but a Syrian journalist has died today of wounds sustained in a rebel attack. Uh, uh, opposition fighters have increased sniper attacks and abductions of journalists. Is, is it possible, do you think, that NATO is concerned about, about the actions of the right side? 
Uh, I don't think NATO is. I think NATO is concerned with the grander geostrategic situation and the kind of what's happening on the ground fits into their thinking, and the morality of what's going on. I don't think is a huge issue for them. Um, um, that might sound cynical, but I think it's real. I think that is the reality. And so these individual episodes, and we've seen many, many of them. We see that when the Syrian government is accused of doing something, it's always played up. We see when the rebels do something, it's always played down. So there's a grand game being played. And as I said, uh, the, I think that uh, the United States in particular is evaluating the situation in a very different way now from a few months ago. And they're, they're the key player in this. All right, Jeremy Salto, Middle Eastern History and Politics Professor at Bill Kent University at Ankara. Thank you very much for joining us on RT today. A pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.